Anyone who's used the Fujifilm Cam Remote app at some point probably became so frustrated with it that you wanted to chuck your phone at the wall. It's got almost 3,000 reviews in the App Store, and it can't get past a rating of 1.4. Now, there have been rumors for the past year about a new app from Fujifilm, and last week we finally got it. It was, of course, pulled on release day for a nasty bug, but it was re-released the next day. I took a deep look at how to use the new Fujifilm X app, what it can do, and I'll offer some thoughts on this hopefully big improvement from Fujifilm. Now, what can the new Fujifilm app do? Well, it can connect to your camera. I've tested this app on five different cameras so far. The pairings are instant, the Wi-Fi connects every time, and I haven't been booted off yet. The app is compatible with these cameras. You'll still need to use the Cam Remote app for anything else. These are the Bluetooth enabled cameras that'll work with the new app. You do need to update your camera firmware first. You cannot pair these cameras to the app without new firmware. And if you don't know how to do that, I'll link to those steps in the description for this video. The new app retains a lot of the same functionality as the old app, like a basic shutter release, live view remote, image transfer, and camera firmware updates. The app also has some new features that might get you excited or you might not care. First is a backup function. This'll let you save all of your camera settings, except for custom white balance, to the app so that you can back them up later. If you worked hard on those film recipes, you can save them to your app so you can restore them later if you need to. The other new function is what you can think of as a photo diary. You'll see two tabs at the bottom called Timeline and Activity. Timeline shows events that have been triggered in your camera. You set which events are recorded to your camera memory card, Events like pressing the shutter, image transfers, function button usage, and powering the camera off and on. You can also record thumbnails and location information with these events. The app pulls those events from your memory card via Bluetooth and then gives you a day-by-day -day diary of your photography in the app. And then the activity menu shows you a running total of all of your photographic activity with your total image counts broken down by camera model, lens, film simulation, and how many rolls of photographic film that it equate to, and for movies, film simulation, and how many feet, miles, or meters of film that that would equate to. Now let's take a quick look at how to use all this. First, make sure that you update your firmware. And maybe now is the good time to update your lens firmware too, because there have been some pretty good autofocus and exposure improvements for the lens firmware. Pairing your camera is so much easier than before. With your camera powered on, press and hold the display back button. Select Bluetooth at the top of the function button list. Then select pairing and press OK. Then open up the app and tap on pairing a new camera or the plus sign in the upper right. The app's gonna play a little slideshow explaining how to pair the camera, but the connection should be complete before that's done. And then you can rename your camera if you want to. You'll see a camera card on the connect screen showing the connection status, some action buttons, and an additional menu for that camera. You just repeat as necessary for all of your Bluetooth enabled cameras. You have two remotes available to you, a basic shutter release and a live view remote, just like with the old app. To use the basic shutter release, like for a long exposure or to get in front of the camera, tap on remote control. Then you just press that button to take a picture. You can slide the button up to open the shutter in the bulb shutter dial setting, and then slide it down to end the exposure. For the live view remote, Tap on Image Acquisition Photography. The app's gonna tell the camera to create a Wi-Fi network, and then it's gonna ask you to join it. Once you're connected, tap on the camera icon at the top 
to enter the live view. And from there, you can adjust your camera settings like aperture, exposure compensation, film simulation, with those icons directly above the shutter button. Then you just tap on the screen to focus and press the shutter button to capture the photo. Transferring images with X app is also much easier than with the cam remote app. Again, tap on image acquisition photography and join the Wi-Fi network. You'll see a grid of photos on your memory card here, and those are arranged by date. You can use the icons in the upper left to switch slots for cameras with two card slots and use the icons in the upper right to switch between grid and list views. And then there's a filter, so you can just filter all of your photos by date. Then you can select the photos that you want to transfer by tapping on the circle in that photo. After selecting one image, you'll see additional icons in the upper left to select all or none. And enable that resize button in the lower right to downsize your images to small. Unless you wanna post 26 megapixel images to Instagram where they're gonna be downsized to 1.2, just go small and then tap transfer the selected images. You can also tag images on your camera to transfer it to the app as you did before using the transfer submenu option in the playback menu or use the auto image transfer function in your connection setting menu to tag all images for transfer. And then the app's gonna notify you when those images are ready for transfer from your camera. Let's look at that settings backup feature. I'm pretty excited about this feature, especially with how Fujifilm axed their traditional custom settings structure in the new cameras. I might slightly tweak my baseline custom settings depending on the situation that I'm in, but then these changes either get reset when you cycle the power, which created all sorts of surprises for me, or they're permanently saved as the new settings. But now you can restore your original settings at the beginning of each photo shoot. With your camera all set up the way you wanna save it and connected to the app, tap on backup restore, then tap backup settings from the camera. Give this backup a name and you can save more than one backup for a camera, then tap on backup. To restore those settings, tap on that camera's backup restore button, then just tap on the name of the backup you want to restore and select restore. These backups are specific to each camera model, like you can't restore an X100V backup to an X-T4. Now for that activity log. You'll need to sign in to Fujifilm's network using either Apple, Google, or Facebook to use the timeline and activity features, which is completely optional to use the app. And there is no social component to this. It's just how Fujifilm is going to identify you on its network. Your activity is sent to Fujifilm for processing and displaying in the app. They say they then delete that information and you can read more in the privacy policy found in the settings menu to see what they do with that information. With all the ways apps have been mishandling our personal information lately, I wouldn't be surprised if some of you want nothing to do with this. But if you do want to get started, go to activity and then choose the network that you want to sign in with. Then choose which events that you want to be recorded. Tap on the three dots in the upper right of that camera card and choose Enabling Activity Records. As mentioned earlier, these events are saved to your camera memory card and then they're transferred to the app when you tap on Upload Activity. In the timeline menu, you can pull down to refresh your photography log then you can tap on any card to see your activity for that period. You can edit the thumbnail, edit the title, add notes and more by tapping on the pencil icon in the upper right. You can also pull down to refresh the activity menu if the activity menu doesn't appear current. My first impressions of the new app from Fujifilm are solid. Granted, it hasn't been out for a week yet, but I've connected five cameras to it, I've taken it out on a hike, 
I've tested all the features, and I haven't seen any problems yet. I'll update the description for this video if something does come up. Unfortunately, you'll still need to use the old app if you don't have a Bluetooth capable camera like the X-T2, 20, X-Pro2, X100F, X-E3 and older cameras. And I don't really know if I'll use the timeline and activity features just because of the nature of my documentary client work, but I can see how this could be a fun feature for personal photography. Keeping track of how many rolls of film you've used, for example, can make you more mindful of how many times you press that shutter button when you put it into those terms so that you're more deliberate with the photos that you capture, and that can help you improve. I suppose that with these features, I can always delete a day of client work so that my timeline now only shows my personal photography. And that could be a solution for that because you can delete certain days. I'm also really happy with the ability to back up and restore camera settings for the reasons mentioned earlier. And this could also maybe allow you to use more film simulation recipes than you can store in your camera at once. Just load those all up into the app. So that's a basic overview of the new app. I did add a module in all of our Fujifilm camera tutorial courses dedicated to and using this app in more detail. And you can check out those courses at photocourses.link slash cameras. Use Tube20 for 20% off. And if you have any questions or experiences with this app, let us know in the comments. Subscribe for more tips like this every week, and we'll see you in the next one.